In this video about the January 2017 version of Phonebox 4, I'd like to introduce you to some of the small workflow changes which can make a big difference to busy talk shows. We're always looking at ways to reduce clicks and speed up operation, and you can already uh, route a call, hold a call, dial a call, or answer a call, uh, all with a single click. There are, however, some pretty useful functions tucked away on the little slide out menu, which are two clicks, slide to hang up, slide and call details, and slide and call back. There is already a function in Phonebox 3 and Phonebox 4, which some of you might not have uh, discovered, which is that if you hold down the control key and click on a line, uh, that will act as hang up on that single click. And it's useful if you want to clear down a whole lot of lines very quickly. So in this version, we've enhanced that to allow you to use a shift and click, a control and click, and an alt and click to achieve uh, any three of these context functions. By default, when you update, control click will be the only one set as before, hanging up on a specific line with one click. However, you can also, as we have here, for example, now alt and click a line, and you'll see that has immediately brought up the call details panel. So if I want to quickly jump in uh, and edit, for example, Rita's call, I can alt and click something which is in the on-air panel. I can alt and click Martin on a line. And not only does that immediately pop the call details panel, but it also puts the cursor immediately to the end of the call point. So literally, if I want to edit uh, what Dan is saying at the top here, alt and click, and as I start typing, then that's immediately appearing with just that single click. Alt and click any line anywhere in the on-air panel, and I'm immediately editing the point of that call. There are other context functions which are also uh, quite popular. In particular, one of them is the callback function. And that, again, normally means sliding out and choosing callback. However, here we've set that up under the shift key. So shift and clicking this will cancel callback or toggle callback onto these three calls just with three clicks very, very quickly like that. This allows me actually to demonstrate another feature that we've improved, which is when you close the lines in Phonebox 4, previously the red X replaced the line number, and that meant that it was unclear which of these calls was in callback mode uh, and which of them weren't. Now I can see here, okay, that I have three calls in callback, so I can perhaps cancel these two, uh, even though the lines are closed. Also, if you have hung up uh, pending callback calls in this white state, uh, if you then were to go to lines and hang up all lines, previously what would have happened is it would have cleared down all of the lines, including these pending callback lines. Now it will clear down active calls, be they ringing, be they held or rooted, uh, but it will leave people in this offline pending state. But what if you actually want to call somebody live on air and hear that ringing sound? So here, we've improved a couple of features to make that really much easier. First of all, in the call log, tucked down the bottom is this new key. Previously, when you hit new, what it would do is create a blank new call log record, uh, but it was pretty tough to spot because it would be just created at the top of the call log. Now, when you press it, it creates the record, but it also pops the details panel, uh, and it means that I can just type in a name, I can put in the phone number that I want to call, and I can immediately either put that in the call log or touch on air. Now, you've always been able to put, actually, hung up calls into the on-air queue, uh, and it's a way of taking perhaps a point from somebody who's timid about going on-air but has a really strong point and popping it through almost like a message. But we've extended that to allow these new calls, once they've been made, to go into the on-air queue alongside uh, other uh, active callers. And then if this is a call that the producer is sending me that I'm going to make that outbound call to, all I have to do is touch one of these calls here, and that call is routed. And all I need to do, if this was a real call wired up to the outside world, is touch that call, and this device will actually start an outbound call immediately ringing that person. And therefore, it's really easy to get those ringing calls on air. Another one of my favorite features in this version is aimed at specific presenters of shows who aren't keen on seeing all of the call screening information on lines. Some particularly comedy performers find that if they have too much information about the call before they uh, take it, that that can stop some of the spontaneity of their response. However, it's still useful for the production, for archive purposes, and just for management purposes to know who's on which line. So we've added the ability under lines to hide the call point. 
and you'll see that everywhere on my screen now where there is a point, it's suppressed, it's just blurred. I can see there's something there, I can see how much information is there, but I can't read the specific details. Everybody else collaborating on this production, be they call screeners, producers, studio managers, can still see all of the information, but in my system, the point will be suppressed like this. You can set this to be the default condition so that uh, at any time uh, this workstation will be suppressed, or you can make it an option that can be enabled and disabled through the lines menu, or even when it's uh, enabled, an alt click or bringing up call details will allow me to peek inside and see the information for this specific caller. But it's useful uh, if you want to keep all the information about your callers, but you don't want every workstation to be able to see those. It also helps the history functions, which we've enhanced in the call log down here uh, under search. One of the comments we got back from users is the search panel is pretty big. Now, we've tried to make it as small as we can to give you a view of, of a bunch of the lines behind it. It's also now semi-transparent. So if you do have ringing calls or other call activity happening behind the scenes, then the uh, panel is just transparent enough to see ringing calls through it. We've reduced the number of keystrokes. So now, for example, if I'm typing the name Steve into here, as soon as I hit enter, the responses for Steve come back straight away. I don't have to go down and click on the search function. And the date feature was previously set by a rather complex date picker. Now I can just choose to go one month or three months, etc. Or if I want to, I still have a custom ability to pop up not just a date, but a time picker. So I can find a particular call from a very narrow time range or go back right through the history and find, for example, all of the on-air callers or all of the callers who match uh, a particular set of parameters. So slightly smaller, semi-transparent and much quicker to get to a lot of the search functions in this January 2017 uh, version. There's also a feature down here in the chat window which allows us to draw attention to new chat messages. So I'm going to go over here and set a new chat message like this. And you'll see that as soon as my workstation sends the chat message, it starts to flash in this sort of amber color. Uh, we've also added the time that the message was sent, uh, which will show date and time if it's progressed beyond the end of the day. Uh, and you'll notice that this will flash for around about 20 seconds just to draw my attention to it. Now, there already was another feature which we can use here to draw attention to messages, which is if I send a chat message uh, with an exclamation point, so here I'm sending uh, an urgent message. You'll see all I have to do is append an exclamation point on the end of the message. Uh, and now it's flashing in that even more alarming red color. Uh, this again will flash for around about 20 or 30 seconds to draw my attention to the fact that I need to really see this message. And once it's finished flashing, you'll notice that while this message has gone to black, uh, this has gone to red and bolder. And you can change the size of this chat font uh, in the settings. So if some people find uh, the default font slightly too small, it is possible to enlarge that. One feature around social media that uh, some people have requested is the ability to remove the uncurated uh, log of messages, the general message queue. This was possible in the previous version in certain specific views. However, now for a specific workstation, you can define that this workstation in the studio, uh, if it's for a talent position who is distracted or offended perhaps by just seeing these uncurated messages, you can disable the message queue entirely from those positions. It's still possible to see social media that's been rooted into the on-air queue, uh, and they can continue to operate alongside a, a social media producer or call screeners who are feeding social media into the on-air queue, but it removes the ability to see any uh, unmediated or uncurated messages. So I hope that these small changes will make a big difference to your ability to answer more and better calls uh, and to make better radio. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you again soon.